and liberals. You know, sort of like the politics you see, if you watch any news channel, the politics of our nation is sort of like that. Except that there's two different, instead of conservative, it's traditionalist and progressives. That's the term we'll use, that are, that, that are used. And it's generally from the liberals making those labels. Liberal, you know, liberals say that they are progressing us, are moving us forward as the culture changes. And our culture has changed in the past 100 years. And it's a good change. And they would use the term, well, look, women couldn't even vote 100 years ago, I think, whatever the time was. You had deep segregation. And, and racism and all this kind of stuff. And we have progressed, rightfully so, from those things. You know, women have a lot more rights, and obviously discrimination and desegregation I mean, is, is a pretty much a thing of the past. But anyway, liberals say that traditionalists are stuck in the past on things like traditional marriage. Well, you know, cultures change. You can civilly do same-sex marriages. And the church has to move forward and be a part of that. That's, that's the liberal side of things. Uh, liberals say that the conservatives are not inclusive enough. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard unity, inclusion, and all that stuff at the, at the conference, and that was the general, and it did rightfully so. You know, nobody should be excluded. He had himself here a little bit. But anyway, liberal say conservatives are not inclusive enough and that we, and I'm a conservative, exclude certain people. That's simply not true. It is not true. It's not true for me personally. It is not true from the conservative, traditionalist, that I know and am around, it is not true. And to coin a phrase, it may be politically incorrect, I like to call it maybe it's fake news. And I'll stop with that. And both sides will use scripture and some fairly valid scripture to support their side. So that's where the impasse is. Well, you know, how I interpret the Bible says this, and how I interpret it says that. So, you know, my, I'm right, you're wrong, or vice versa. And so, the reason the impasse, you know, n nobody can come to the middle. Scripture does tell us about inclusion, and it also tells us about exclusion. So, thus the title. So, we're going to look at the inclusion, exclusion. And again, I thought about I've thought about this for a long time. It does work theologically as a conservative theologian interpreter of the Bible. It works. It does sound like a contradiction, though, doesn't it? And that's what that was my problem with the title. It sounded like a contradiction. But if you look at it closely, you'll see that it's not. First, God is a God of inclusion. He is a God of inclusion. Only we can choose exclusion. That's, that's the key point. God includes, we exclude ourselves. It all begins with sin. It all begins with sin. It does. Romans 3.23. You got one, and you know, there's a few scriptures in fact, these are very traditional scriptures I'm going to use today. Paul tells us and says, all, all, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Can I say that 
Note that word all. Can I stretch it out? All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That sounds inclusive to me. Doesn't it? Amen. There's no exclusion there. That's inclusion. All have sinned and fall short of the God, glory of God. All are born sinners with a sin nature. All are born sinners with a sin nature. And I'm an all. I'm an all. I'm in there with, you, with the rest of you. Due to sin, all are out of fellowship with God. And, he, and destined to eternal damnation. You know, that's a foundational doctrine of Christianity. It is a foundational doctrine of the Methodist Church. It's a foundational doctrine of the Baptist Church. It's a foundational doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. The original sin and the sin nature that we are born with. It is foundational. It is inclusive to all people. None are excluded from that. It doesn't matter your sin or sexual orientation. No one is excluded. No one is excluded. All are sinners. Do we, do we have that? Is there, give me an amen if everybody's clear on that part of it. Amen. I think scripture is clear, church tradition is clear, you know, that is a foundation doctrine of, of Christianity. Just as all were born sinners with a sin nature, all can be forgiven and redeemed. All can be forgiven and redeemed. Nobody should be excluded from that. Forgiveness and redemption are for all. God offers His Son, Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice for the sins of all people. God offers His Son, Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice for sins of all people. No one is excluded. Okay? Now, famous verse, famous scripture. We all know, and sometimes, you know, most people can recite this. And sometimes we just sort of, if you like me, just I can just... Now, of course, I started not to know why I come. I was putting this together. I said, I said, no, this fits so good with this. It, 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 you know, sometimes it, it's wrong with you. You know, something so popular that you're afraid to use in a sermon. What's wrong? Like, Lord, forgive me. You know, Lord, forgive me for that. But well, we know this so well. Let's just look at it again. We're going to look at it. I'm going to look at it a little bit different angle, though. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to judge this translation, or condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through him. Again, very popular, you know, scripture. Most anybody ever associated with Christianity can repeat. John 3, 16, and probably 17 also, but at least 3, 16. I want you to focus on two words. The world. For God so loved the world. Now, in translate that, <coughs> that equals all humanity. All humanity. Say it another way. All people. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten.
begotten Son. For God so see how that sounds it. For God so loved the world. For God so loved all humanity, or for God so loved all people that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen. Amen. All right, you with me? Good. Everyone's included. None are excluded. There's no exclusion here. However, in this famous scripture, we start to see a transition from inclusion to exclusion. This is where you're going to let, you know, hang in here with it. This is the good part, I think. The phrase, whoever believes. I see some people shaking their heads. Y'all done, done figure this out. Good, good. You know, whoever believes, you know, requires a person to make a choice, doesn't it? Am I, am I thinking correctly on this? I don't want to spend a month thinking about this and putting all this together and then I find out I'm totally wrong. But it requires a choice. Somebody's got to make a decision here. Is that right? Yep. Uh, amen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. Who? <laughs> requires a person to choose to believe or not. You don't have to believe. If you choose to believe, you are excluded. Excuse me. Oh, man. Come on. Reset, reboot. I'm rolling. I'm going to have to edit that part out. <laughs> and I'm not bold in my, in my notes here. If you choose to believe, you are included. Included, amen. Thank you. You're included in God's plan for salvation for the whole world, for all the world. If you choose to believe you are included in God's plan of salvation, the other side of that coin, if you choose not to believe, you are excluded from God's plan of salvation. That is the inclusion, exclusion. God includes all people. But we, you, us, an individual, can exclude themselves. You can't exclude yourself. That's the exclusion. Another Famous scripture in John 14, 6. The words of Christ again. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, meaning Christ. There is only one way yes. to salvation, and it is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Amen. Now let me say this. I don't want in all this, that is exclusive. But again, let me go back. You're excluding, the person is excluding themselves. God is not doing the exclusion. <laughs> yeah, it is tricky, that inclusion, inclusion. You know. You got, are we good, on, we good with that? Okay. Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, etc., etc., are all excluded 
because they do not choose Christ. Oh, man, that's politically incorrect. Oh, my goodness. You know, some United Methodist liberals believe Jesus is not the only way to salvation. See, that gets, that's at the under, that's about a notch down all this stuff about human sexuality and all this kind of stuff. But there, is it, this is even more important that some do not believe. I've heard it from, their, from professors' mouths. I've heard it from students in classes. Some do not believe that. Why do they not believe that? Because it's exclusive. They say you're excluding somebody. And I had when somebody, I said, this was an instructor one time, and I said, well, if somebody's going to teach a class for me or something like that in my church, I'm going to make sure they're saved. And she looked at me, well, well, why would you do that? That's confrontational. Yeah. I heard this. And this is people in, in not high position, but elders in the Methodist church in this conference. That's exclusive. God is a God of inclusion. He includes all sinners, includes all as sinners, and includes all in redemption. That's very inclusive. All are sinners. All can be redeemed through Christ. Only you can exclude yourself from God's plan of salvation. Why in the world would anybody do that? But we see it all the time. You know, it, it just warms my heart when I see young people Wyatt, Ansley, Caleb, and others that have been boldly given their life to Christ. And I see some uh, older people that just, just I, for whatever reason, just, just resist. And they exclude themselves. They're excluding themselves. And God's saying, come on, all are welcome at my table. All are welcome. Christ died for all people. It don't matter what your sin is, Christ died for you.